So just kind of as a reminder, today is the end of the chapter. Tomorrow, we're going to be doing the review for chapter six. And then Wednesday would be our chapter six test. So, you know, absolutely kind of, <clears throat> no, excuse me. Basically, make sure to ask help if, if you want help. Um, today, I'm not going to be available during my open help time because I'm giving a, a test for my other classes during that time. So they have to take their test over Google Meet. Um, so I won't be able to help during open help time today. But uh, we have all tomorrow during class to give you help with anything and tomorrow's uh, open help time. We'll take the test in class on Wednesday. So I don't know if you guys have any questions on that or anything. Okay. You guys are full of thoughts today. Well, then let's uh, let's just kind of get started because there's actually kind of a ton of stuff today to cover. And I'm going to do my best to go through faster on the easier things and then try to save time for the harder things near the end. <clears throat> so the beginning here is, this is all about inequalities today. The first one was just determining if a point is a solution. And I know I'm trying to write fast, so it comes out bad. So, is this the example I can think of here? Is the point seven three a solution? of y is less than x minus 1. <clears throat> and the last time we did inequality stuff was, uh, I think it was chapter 3. It was kind of in the middle of trimester 1. So we did inequalities graphing on a number line, and then I think we did uh, graphing two-dimensional as well. So, But this this particular one has nothing to do with the graph. So if you want to check if a point is a solution, you basically just have to make sure to plug in the two numbers in their correct spots. So like on this one, this would say 3 is less than 7 minus 1. <clears throat> and then you're just going to compare the two sides. So basically, you're asking, is 3 less than 7? And, and yes, it's true. So you can either say yes, you can say true, you can... I mean, there's lots of different things you can say. You could put a check mark. Um, they all basically mean that you kind of verify that information. So, yes is the answer because it is a solution because it's true. If this were false, so if this, if this said 7 is less than 3, well, then you just say that that's false, so then the answer would be no instead of yes. It's, it's very quick to check if something is a solution. Most of you can probably do it in your head. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was a... Um, that is a teacher blunder because I was writing while I was talking, and so I, it's hard to think and do problems at the same time. So, yeah, the one was supposed to be there. Nope, good call. It's actually pretty shocking how hard it is to do problems while you're talking. Okay, so that is the first kind of homework questions you're going to get. My guess is they'll take you seconds. The second type <clears throat> is basically just a refresher on graphing, okay? Basically, everything we're doing in 6.5 is kind of a reminder on how to find answers in 6.6. So when you graph an inequality, 
what you're actually doing is you're actually showing what numbers would work or what numbers are the answers to that inequality. Okay, so we're going to graph this as we would a regular line. <clears throat> uh, we should go with. We should scroll way down, uh, and we're going to have Taylor. Taylor, do you remember how to graph a line? Like, what do we do first? Okay. Do you remember what either one of these numbers stands for? Because these two numbers are, are the only thing we need to focus on. Oh, yeah. That's perfect. That's how we start. That's exactly how we start graphing. So the number by itself is a y-intercept. So I'm going to go up to 4 and put that on the y-axis. So that's called the y-intercept. From this point, I'm going to do the slope. Now, the, the slope is a whole number, so I'll actually write it as 3 over 1. So remember, this is like rise over run. So from this point, I'm going to go up 3 to the right 1. So my second point would be there. Now, I could actually do backwards direction, like because this one was off my graph. I could go down 3, left 1, if I wanted to, and that would give me the same thing. Either way, that makes my line. Now, this is the part that's probably trying to remember from Chapter 3. Less than and greater than are dotted lines. Less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, are solid lines. So this one, I need to graph a dotted line. Okay, and we're almost done. Um, Jamad, Jamad, uh, the less than symbol. Do you remember how I show that on a graph? So we have to shade. Do you remember what, what we do with that? Perfect. Perfect. Nice memory. So the less than means you're going to shade below. So what I'm going to do is from this line, I'm just going to go straight down. That's below, right? And I know this is terrible shading, but if you're having trouble figuring out where to shade, go straight down or straight up if it's above. So I'm going to erase all these because that looks terrible and it's going to bother me. But that's how you do it if you're having trouble, is you either shade straight down or straight up. Uh, I, I don't, jeez, I don't even know a good way to shade on this thing. I guess we'll have to go with that. It's definitely a lot easier on paper, because then you can kind of lightly shade with your pencil. It's not great on here. Okay, questions about this, because this is, this is key for today. So you're going to have to... Okay, good. You're right. Sorry, I, I, I did it. I did mention that just really quick and brief. <clears throat> um, why less than, and why less than or equal to, shades below. Why greater than, why greater than or equal to shades above. So it's it's basically the arrow compared to y. <clears throat> uh, 
Okay, that's a good question. I will answer that one in a second. It's, it's basically the next part I'm showing or going over. Um, on, on the information we have up here, is there anything else you might have a question on or need help remembering anything? Okay, so <clears throat> to answer Caleb's question, the shading shows you every single point that is true. So every single point within the shaded part, if I randomly pick any of these, every single point over here, if I plug it in the equation, would be true. So like the point zero, zero is, is usually really easy to check. And so if, if I have to check if this is a solution, 0 is less than 3 times 0 plus 4. So 0 is less than 4, and that's true. Every single point in this shaded area would make it true. So that, that's kind of the whole reason we shade, because the shading actually represents all of the points next to each other that work. Okay, um, let's kind of halfway do this one together, because I can, I can see I don't want to move on quite yet. I wasn't sure how much you guys would remember from Chapter 3, so that's why we're... Okay, so we need to graph this one, right? Um, uh, Jack. Jack, uh, why does this equation look different than the one we just graphed? What's the main difference? Okay, good. That's a very good way to say it. For us to be able to graph these, to shade these, we want it to say y is greater than or y is less than or, you know, we want it solved for y. So we have to do that on this problem first, and then we can graph it. So we're going we're gonna to subtract 3x to start with. And then this would say negative 2y is greater than or equal to 6 minus 3x. And then we need to divide by negative 2. And we need to call on somebody else that has a very keen mind, good memory. I, 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 I don't, I don't want to. I'll just leave this one for anybody to answer. Do you guys remember what happens when you divide by a negative? That's definitely true. I was specifically talking about the symbol. You flip the inequality. See, yep, good. Uh, but what you said was absolutely correct. So, on an inequality, if you divide by a negative, the symbol flips. So negative 3, uh, this becomes plus 3 halves x. And so this is what we would graph. Why don't you guys just quickly try to graph this, um, just to make sure you kind of remember or you know, know how to type thing. I wanted to make sure to solve it with you, but See, see if you can remember how to graph that. So remember, the number by itself is the y-intercept. It's, it's not always like first number, second number. It's the number by itself. Sorry, I just... Oh, yeah, you wrote the answer over there. Uh, okay, so we're going to start at negative 3. 
So that's my y-intercept. And then the slope is 3 over 2. So that means I want to go up 3 to the right 2 from there. So 1, 2, that one seemed weird. 1, 2, 3 is right here. Uh, 1, 2 to the right is right here. And then this is going to be a solid line. And we are going to shade below. Because it says less than. So solid line. And then shade below. I wonder if I have... Uh, here, this might... I wonder if this will work. That doesn't look much different at all. Okay, but that is shaded below regardless. <clears throat> okay, so if, if you did it correct, this is kind of what it should have came out like. Any kind of questions on that? Go for it. It's a good question. Uh, I can just write that up there quickly. So you're correct. There is no above and below if the line is straight up and down. So if it says like x is greater than 4, this this would be a straight up and down line at 4. Um, I guess it would be dotted. And in this case, instead of above and below, you graph right and left. So greater than would be shaded greater than. So correct. If it's and this is the only case that happens, and because that's in the situation, there's not a above and below. Okay, then let's move on to six six, because that's where I wanted to try to get to quicker if I could, because they're they're more complex. Basically, we're going to be having two equations at the same time, so it's it's like what we are doing in chapter six, just with inequalities. <clears throat> so all of 6-6 six, six is systems of inequalities. So that just means two of them at a time. So um, is the point 2-1 a solution of y is less than negative x plus 4, and y is less than or equal to x plus 1. <clears throat> so the only difference here is that you basically have to do both equations at the same time. I mean, that's, that's really the difference. So 2 and 1. I'll make sure to plug those in correctly. So 1 is less than negative 2 plus 4. 1 is less than 2, which works. So I would say that this is true. And then I'm going to plug in the second equation. 1 is less than or equal to 2 plus 1, which also works and is true. So, the question, is 2, 1 a solution of both of these? Then the answer is yes. So, to be a solution, both must be true. If either one of them is false or no, then automatically it's not a solution. So it has to be yes for both to be yes. I mean, that's, that's basically going to be the only difference from the ones we just did like five minutes ago. And then 
getting to the ones that are going to take up most of our time today is graphing systems of equations. Uh, but I, I, mean, I don't mean to blow by this question either. Does, does somebody want me to help you on anything from 6.6 six or want me to clarify anything? Uh, like the green or what color? Ah, okay. So what I did was I took the point 2, 1, and I plugged it into both equations. So I put I put 1 in place of y and 2 in place of x. Yeah. Um, example 2 and, oh, shoot. And three. So we're doing both examples kind of in the same spot. Now, when you guys are doing your homework on this, I'm, I'm not expecting like nice, perfect graphs. I just want you to understand the idea of what we're supposed to be doing. So don't worry about if it's sloppy or messy or whatever. Just it's, it's just as long as you can learn kind of what we're doing with them. <clears throat> uh, Garrett, I was hoping you could help me out with a question. Oh, oh, not even, yep. No, no, what you're saying is perfect. I don't even want to graph these quite yet. <clears throat> what I was hoping you could help me answer. Uh, up in 6.6, six, when I asked if 2, 1 is a solution of both equations, the only way it works, the only way it works is if it's in both of them at the same time. So do you remember... Do you remember how I can tell which points are answers to a graph? Okay. If I scroll back up. So this was kind of the question Caleb had. Every single one of these points in the shaded area is a solution. Okay. So, so basically, the shaded area are the answers. If I'm going to graph two lines at the same time, what would my, where would my answers be? Like, how am I going to see which ones are answers to both lines? So, the answers for each line... The answers for each line are shaded. Okay, so let's 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 say the top line is going to be pink, and the bottom line is going to be blue. So I'll shade them separately with different colors. So up on this graph, I'm going to have two different lines with two different shaded things. How do I tell which ones are answers to both at the same time? Perfect. Perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. So we're going to graph both of these lines totally separate. And wherever the two shadings overlap each other are common answers. And that's actually what we're looking for for the final answer here. 
So it's basically like taking two single problems, put them on top of each other, and then see where they share in common. So I, I know some people get a little bit overwhelmed when they see these problems, because this feels like a lot to do. But you're basically just going to do the, them completely separate and look to see where they have answers in common. So I'll do them, I'll do them in different colors, which I know might be tough for you on your paper. So the pink one, uh, uh, Enrique, how do I, how do I graph the pink one? Maybe you're not there, or maybe your mic's not working. Um, uh, Grace? Do you remember how I graphed the pink one? Or Honey? Honey, are you there? Whoa, Hattie? <laughs> okay, I was starting to think my mic wasn't actually working. <laughs> uh, correct, you want to get Y by itself. And then I'm going to divide everything by 4. Okay, so the three is where we start, and then from there I'm going to do a slope. So my slope is negative two over one. So that means from this point I'm going to go down two to the right one. Uh, it's a solid line. Ugh, that's so hard to do. I wonder if I can change the opacity. Doesn't look like it. <clears throat> I think I can just change how big it is. Or is this? Come on. Is this the opacity? No. I don't want to make this look like a huge mess. It actually works out pretty good on the smart board because I picked the the thing that looks like a crayon. Um, but I need to shade below. So maybe I'll just kind of try to do it really light. Actually, that worked out better than I thought it would. OK, so there's, there's below. And then I'm going to do the blue one. And then I want to see where they overlap each other. So 1 half x minus 2, I'm going to start with the minus 2. And from there, a slope of 1 half. So up 1 to the right 2. And it's going to be a dotted line shaded above. So, okay, and then the only section that has pink and blue shaded at the same time, good God, how should I do this? I don't think the highlighter would work. <laughs> the only section that has both is right here. This is where they're both shaded. So this orange is what I give as the final answer. So on the test, 
I'm, I'm totally good with just you trying to shade. Or if it's a multiple choice question, the way that you show the shading is just the orange. Because it would say, what is the solution to these systems of equations? And these orange points are the ones that make both equations true. So I'll just say, like, solution is orange. Something like that. How is that? Go ahead, Gio. Did you have a question, or you just accidentally hit the button? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No. No. Um... It only worked that way because these guys had different symbols. Um, like, like if both of the lines said above, then what would happen is it would be like the top section is where they would meet. If both of them said below, then it would be the bottom section where they meet. So it, it totally depends which way the arrows are pointing. How about anybody else? Feel free, feel free to ask away. Okay, have you guys... Do you guys vaguely remember this from pre-algebra? If you could type yes or no in the chat, that'd be awesome. Okay, okay. All right. Okay, good. Then I'm, I'm not going to take forever doing it then. Okay. Because if this is the first time you've seen it, then then it's awfully difficult. Oh, perfect. A lot of people remember it. Okay, then I'm going to show you the last section part, and then I'll, you know, we'll be done because I want you guys to have some time to be able to work. I don't want to take up the whole hour with notes and then... So, example three... I'm forgetting how to spell parallel. Pretty sure that's right. So example three is parallel lines. And um, parallel lines cause weird things to happen. That didn't work. It's way too big. copy paste okay so I'm going to show you what would th the three different things that could happen with parallel lines <laughs> what happened to the line I thought I was doing the line tool again Okay. Actually, what am I doing? Let's get smart. If I copy and paste, it's guaranteed to be parallel. Perfect. Okay, I got parallel lines. So, the shading of these lines is what causes kind of weirdness. So, you might get, you might get that they both have shading, but that the shading doesn't touch anywhere. So it's possible that the two shaded areas never intersect or never uh, or on top of each other, you know, however you want to phrase that. So a situation like this would have no solutions. It's also possible that, oh, how am I going to draw this? I'll go back to pink and blue. It's also possible that they'll completely overlap. And the two sections 
the two sections create the two sections create a parallel intersection. So the solutions could be in the middle. And then the third thing that could happen is they could both point the same way. Uh, oh, was this, this must have been pink. What am I doing? Come on. Catch up, computer. I think that's the pink we had. And so in this case, if they're both pointed the same direction, their, their section where they cross each other is just going to go on forever, um, you know, except for it follows a line. It's not going to be like a, like a square or a diamond section. It's just going to be on forever. So parallel lines, you could get one of these three things happening. So just kind of keep those in mind. Okay, um, that's all I had for you guys. I, I didn't want to spend a ton of time having you guys try examples today because I knew that that would eat up the entire class hour. And I, I didn't know if, if you wanted that, but it kind of sounds like a lot of you somewhat remember these. So if, if that's the case, the homework should go pretty well. Um, anybody have any kind of questions or anything from what we just did? Okay. Well, why don't you guys get started on the homework? Um, I've been I've been marking the assignments you didn't get done missing, and just in case you're new to me, um, you are you are still able to turn in any missing assignment you know until the end. So go ahead and get work made up if you have any work missing. Yeah, go ahead, Jackson. Yep. Yes, the late the late doesn't affect um, doesn't affect anything. Uh, Schoology just automatically calls an assignment late if you turn it in after the due date, but I, I'm the one who puts the points in. So I give you. I usually put it. I put in full credit. I probably already assigned you uh, graded your assignment. I usually do it every morning. Okay, and then and then just because you just so you guys know, because a few people have asked me about it, um, the way that I do the grading, the homework, I don't even remotely check your homework to see if the questions are correct or not. I'm just giving you points if you did the homework, because those concept checks are, you know, graded correct or not. Um, I, I, I basically just give you guys full credit on your homework if you do it. And then the concept checks, the point of them is to see if you're getting questions right or not headed towards the chapter test. Um, but because they're in the homework category, they don't count for much at all. The, the tests are what count for the majority of your grade. So I, and I, you know, I, I should have gone over that the first day of the trimester. I just didn't even think of it because I, I know we have some new people. But either way. Um, you guys have a good rest of your day. Uh, I'll stay on here and answer questions if you want help with anything. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow. You're welcome. See ya. Honey, I keep forgetting to ask you what that little icon is of. It is so strange. Yeah, your icon of some kind of a little character. Her mood? Her mood. Okay, what's he from? Or did you just make him up? Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> he 
It looks really funny as your profile picture. <laughs> you bet. See ya. See ya.